Wall Street looks like us now. Wall Street looks like us now. Wall Street looks like us now. It's as intimate as the chorus of a Negro spiritual fireside as we come together and sing in harmony. But this bond was built through lashings and wounds of open financial torture. But yet, we chat joyously of the possibilities of we shall overcome. Wall Street looks like us now. Wall Street looks like us now. Wall Street looks like us now. It's fear, anger, grief, rage that the Cubans felt that blossomed into an exuberant rejoice as Che Guevara and Fidel Castro overthrew Padista in this wicked, wretched regime. <laughs> Wall Street looks like us now. Wall Street looks like us now. Wall Street looks like us now. Is the fear and terror, yet the relief that the Israelites felt as Moses guided them through Pharaoh. See, there's this, this pain, this joy. There's this orchestra of emotion that comes with chasing freedom as the enigma of trauma is in the foresight of your brain. But Wall Street looks like us now. See, wealth and information is a married bond that produces and fertilizes freedom, opportunity, and access. Wall Street looks like us now. It's an anthem. It's a battle cry. It's an uprising of those who fail, who fail to be denied the opportunities. Financial revolutionaries is what we are. There's a new day. There's a new era. There's a new reign. There's a new game that needs to be played, that has to be played, that will be played. See, wealth and poverty never cared about skin tone. It never produced racism. But there's one class. There's one class that feels the entitlement, the expectancy of wealth. And there's another class that deals with the harsh reality of poverty. Wall Street looks like us now. Wall Street looks like us now. See, in my 39 years of experience in this life, I've realized that there's a class that has perpetually increased their wealth through the blatant financial underdevelopment of another class. We've been bombarded with misinformation, a slew of tactics that cripple the forward progress of a class of people. A premeditated financial and economic slaughter. But no, I'm not here to talk about the inadequacies of wealth. Nah. I'm not here to say tax the rich, give to the poor. Nah. I'm not here for that. But what I am here to say is that we can play the game. Wall Street is a machine that prints freedom that prints equality. 
Because the person at the table with money now has a voice. And what if I told you you could print that money? Not the illegal way, but the way that the wealthy have been doing for generation after generation after generation. It's owning the same companies that market and use our data religiously. It's by owning the same banks. It's by owning those banks through the stock market. It's by getting dividends from those banks and then using financial institutions as our modern day trap house. <laughs> How do we get back to the trap? Trap? It's simple. I've realized that the Fortune 500 companies operate the same as the gangsters on the corner. How? Trap? Marketing? Branding? It's all the same. It's just a different product. Wall Street looks like us now. Wall Street looks like us now. Wall Street looks like us now. This is what O.W. Gurley stood for. Yes. This is what O.W. Gurley meant when he took 40 acres and didn't charge his counterparts. He told them, go blossom. This is what Reginald White meant when he said, white guys shouldn't have all the fun. Wall Street looks like us now. Wall Street looks like us now. Wall Street looks like us now. There's a game played between a financial predator and the financial prey. Let's look at the lion in the safari. We all know that it's at the hierarchy of the food chain. And the cubs must adapt to the same strategy that the elders used. He must learn to hunt. He must learn to ambush. He must learn to be ferocious so that his food chain, his place on the food chain lasts forever. So he must be fearless. He must be merciless in his appetite. Where the gazelle, the zebra, the water buffalo, the impala lives a life of defense. Even one day watching helplessly as he watched a family member from the herd get devoured, knowing helplessly he doesn't have the tools to adequately save his counterpart. And in that moment, it becomes apparent that he too can die that same grotesque death. Wall Street looks like us now. Wall Street looks like us now. How long have we watched our parents work two and three jobs only to barely survive? And then pass that same, that same scarcity down to us. Wall Street looks like us now. It's a battle cry. Wall Street looks like us now. It's the equalizer. Wall Street looks like us now says, I don't need a gun because the information now equips me for this battle. <laughs> Wall Street looks like us now. During this pandemic, we watched the wealthy increase their wealth by five trillion dollars to this day. But yet we paid Chase a PPP loan, the insult of a stimulus check. But yet America is 30 trillion dollars in debt and growing. If I look at you as debt clock or. Now, I don't know where you from, but where I'm from. If you overdraft a couple times, you get a cute little message that says insufficient funds. You may even get a little call. Mr. Trapper, we would love for you to come in so we can handle and make some adjustments to your account. So how is it that 
at $30 trillion, one class has the opportunity to continue to print money. I mean, it's said to us that we must work until we're 40. We must work 40 years until we're 65. But yet the money printer never stops printing. See, the wealthy and a certain class of people have learned from their elders how to prepare for economic winters. A certain class of people prepares for Black Friday religiously, while a certain class of people prepares for real estate busts, for stock market crashes, for low interest economic situations where they can borrow other people's money, buy assets, let the assets pay off the debt, and then increase their wealth in the trap we call that making money during a drought. Wall Street looks like us now. Wall Street looks like us now. It's me saying that we are renegotiating that contract. No longer will we work two and three jobs to survive. No longer will we accept the scarcity mindset. No longer will I continue to trade time for money. No, no, I will trade money for time. Because time is the one thing that I can never get back. Time, my dear friends, is the ultimate luxury. And you buy back your time, not by hard work, but by great investments. Wall Street looks like us now. Wall Street looks like us now. Wall Street looks like us now. I tell you this. I tell you this because this is not your grandfather's investor. I don't look like the two men from trading places. Nah, I come from the hoods of New Orleans, Louisiana. I stood in those abandoned houses. I slept in those abandoned cars. Until this day, I stand in front of you knowing that I can go on Wall Street and talk with any trader or investor and lure him. I am the Wall Street trapper. I stand on it. I believe in it. It's better than blue magic. Wall Street looks like us now. Wall Street looks like us now, and I leave you with this, let financial literacy be the keys that unlock your birthright and give you a life of prosperity, wealth, and abundance. Let us now make the sacrifices that are necessary to turn our last names into assets. Let us now breathe life into the next generations so that we can abolish the scarcity mindset and equip them with the tools to play financial offense. Let the consequences of wealth be a lifetime of freedom. Wall Street looks like us now. Thank you.